Hello and welcome to Coffee Lovers TV. On the show today, we have another Tim Wendelbow coffee. If you watched the last show, uh, you'll have seen the Finca Tamana. On the show today, we have Tim Wendelbow's Karagato. This is a uh, coffee from Kenya, Nairi, Kenya. It's another wash processed coffee. I believe that everything that Tim Wendelbow produces is wash processed. Uh, and this is from the December 2015 harvest. I like seeing the harvest dates on there. It's very interesting. I wonder if they have enough overlap that you could compare a coffee from the same farm at uh, different harvests. Uh, anyhow, just like last week, we're going to be making this coffee on the AeroPress. Uh, and again, on Tin Wendelbow, I'm not going to go on a whole spiel again, but check out link in the description below. You can get the issue uh, for free where I interviewed uh, Tim and we shared his whole story. Uh, he does a lot of great work, uh, direct work with farms, uh, investing in uh, improving quality at the farming level. So they, they start off with a really high quality of green coffee when they're roasting, and then uh, they are, their roasting is just outstanding. Without further ado, let's go ahead and brew this Kenyan coffee uh, by Tim Wondobo. We're gonna do it on the AeroPress, 14 grams, in the AeroPress, 200 grams of water. Uh, very simple process. Well, let's have a, have a smell first. Uh, again, this is a coffee that I've also had on, I've had this on the AeroPress, on the Chemex, and on the Kalita Wave. I didn't answer this question in the last video, uh, but which of those I think is best for the coffee? These days, I'm of a mind that there is no, there is no best. You get, you get a unique view of a coffee with each brewing method. There certainly might be an argument for uh, some brew methods bringing a bit more clarity, but I think the clarity comes at the trade-off of certain levels of richness. At least that's what I've experienced when comparing uh, paper filter methods. The Kalita Wave, for example, tends to bring out a lot of richness, but if you were to compare it directly with something like um, the AeroPress with, with this method or the Chemex, you might, you might get a bit more crisp clarity of flavors in those methods, but it lacks a certain uh, level of richness that I really like in a coffee. So I don't mind losing a little bit of what may be clarity of flavor if I can get a bit more richness, uh, maybe a bit more fullness. Anyways, that's how I, that's how I feel at the moment. Uh, the AeroPress, the AeroPress is the method that uh, Tim Monobo Cafe uses uh, to brew their coffees is what they're doing. Uh, so that's what we're doing on the show. It's like vanilla, vanilla covered raisins? Wait, yogurt, yogurt covered raisins. Is that right? That's what's popping in my head, like yogurt covered raisins. That's interesting. There's some nice like dried fruit in there too, which I guess is what a raisin is. I've got yogurt covered raisins. That's what I'm gonna go with for the aroma on this one. Let's, uh, let's brew it up. That's really interesting. The ground coffee is very rich. And what I'm actually getting out of it is, is like tomato soup or like, this might sound really weird, SpaghettiOs. <laughs> Not in a bad way either. Very interesting. I think Kenyan coffees can often have that kind of uh, savory element to them. <sighs> All right, let me give that a second to cool. First sip is kind of uh, herbally, um, quite smooth as well. I think a lot of that smoothness, it's one of the things the AeroPress is really good at, is bringing out uh, smooth sweetness in a coffee, especially when you're brewing that fast, you don't have a lot of time to pull out um, a lot of bitter elements. My AeroPress technique probably needs a bit of work too, but um, that's all right. Getting a lot of good stuff out of here. Again, especially as it cools. So one of the things I didn't mention uh, on the last video is that uh, Tim Wonderbow Cafe, they actually have custom crafted porcelain. Now that's something I could get here for the show, but they, they worked with experts in wine, and I'm sure some other uh, sensor, sensory experts on how uh, to work on how the shape of the vessel affects the taste. Uh, and it really does have a fascinating fascinating effect. Now, 
Um, the coffee last week, the Finca Tamana Colombia coffee, was served in kind of a kind of a tulip. They call it a tulip. Imagine a wider base and a narrower top. Um, and that's what they that's what they served the the Finca Tamana in. Uh, and what I'm told is that that design forces you to tilt your head back more, and the the coffee will land more on the back part of your tongue as you drink uh, and taste the coffee. Mm, rich, rich, uh, like oh, there's more dried fruit on this one. That's interesting. Mm. This one just kind of coat the tongue a bit more. Yeah, like a dried fruit sweetness on this. It's got kind of a chocolatey component too. Oh, and there, there's um, some bright fruitness. Okay, so the uh, the Kenya here was served in kind of a bubbly. This would be a little hard to explain, but imagine the bottom part was bubbled like this, and then comes back in. So it's like a like a bowl at the bottom, and it comes back in, and then comes out again. So it 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 would go like this. Boop boop. Um, and there's kind of a, a ridge in the middle on the inside. And so the bot there's that bottom bowl, and then the and then the top part bows out again, uh, and I believe the the purpose of that is more to do with experiencing the aroma in a specific way. So that's what and they they made that uh, specifically for the Kenya, or at least the Kenya was specifically served in that vessel, and I did have the opportunity to try the Kenya in that vessel and in one of the tulips, and it tasted like a different coffee. Uh, I mean, there are definitely obviously components that were similar in the taste overall, if you sat back and think about it, but on a, on a glance, at a, at a look, the coffees tasted, it tasted like two different coffees, but it was literally poured um, from the same vessel into both cups, uh, you know, same brew, same, uh, same, from the same vessel into two different cups, and it tasted like two different coffees. The only differencing factor was the, the shape of the mug. Unfortunately, I only have this style of, of mug to work with. Although I suppose I could try like a Glencairn or something like that, a scotch glass, but that, so as this cools, there's a lot of fruitiness coming out in this. Um, it's a richer sweetness. And um, yeah, dried fruit is, dried fruit is pretty good. I actually haven't looked at the, at the description yet as I'm describing this, I'm trying to give it more more accurate response. I know in the aroma I described, so the, the bag aroma was that uh, yogurt coated raisin and, and I, you know, dried fruit is coming through on the taste as well. I got that interesting sort of tomato soup kind of reaction to the grounds, which if I think about it, I could probably see sweet tomato on this, but it's coming off more fruity to me. I'm also getting some, some kind of dark chocolate element in there as well. Just kind of dancing around. Very clean. I really like this one. It's got a lot of rich flavors floating around in it. Um, and I tend to like that in my coffee. Let's see what it says. Intense floral and black currants. Yeah, for sure. Floral, floral. I think I might've said herbal at one point on the aroma. Maybe, maybe that was the other one. I think maybe, maybe the high notes could be described as or, uh, uh, floral. I'm actually in the flavor now getting yogurt covered raisin. And maybe that's because I want to, maybe that's because I want to see it. Maybe that's because I smelled it and now I want to taste it. Uh, that's a little hard to, hard to figure out sometimes. This is truly excellent. Another fantastic coffee from Tim Mundelbo. All the links will be in the show description. Check out the issue with Tim Mundelbo. Uh, check out the coffees online. You can order them from anywhere. Shipping costs might be a little high, but um, I'd say it's worth it uh, at least once. To, to try out some of these coffees. Uh, maybe pool together with some friends and enjoy a little exploration of Tim Mundelbo. It's, uh, it's been great trying all these uh, fantastic coffees that we only get once in a blue moon. <sighs> Thank you for watching. Please like, hit that like button, subscribe, leave your comments, let me know what you think. I really do appreciate all of you watching the show uh, and I hope you, hope you have some wonderful coffee explorations in your future.